Sir, a few weeks back I had a hunch that all aspect missiles would be arriving with rank 7 aircraft. And while that is kinda sorta true, we'll be waiting a little while longer for more potent weapons like the AIM-9L and R-60M. And while we wait, I figured I could do a bit of testing with custom missiles uh, to see how they're likely to perform. Pretty simple video, I'll start off with the R-60M and AIM-9L as they currently are before moving on to other more advanced missiles that aren't in the game yet, like the Magic 2, AIM-9M, R-73, stuff like that. Then after that I'll finish off with some general conclusions about how they might work in terms of gameplay. Alright, let's start with the R-60M. Overall, I'd say its performance is a bit of a disappointment compared to the AIM-9L. While it's quite maneuverable in close quarters, the Seeker and aerodynamic range is fairly low, Due to its wide field of view, the R60M is also very weak to flares at any aspect. And when I say weak to flares, I mean that the missile can be reliably decoyed by only one or two taps of the flare button, provided the target aircraft isn't in afterburner, of course. I think it's also worth mentioning that both the R60 and R60M are still a bit buggy in terms of their maneuverability. When they reach very high speeds after launch, they tend to oscillate around wildly, which in turn lowers their maneuverability. Right here you can see me dodging an R60 with just a simple high G turn. So yeah, less than optimal. Now let's take a look at the AIM-9L. For starters it has a much higher aerodynamic range, on par with the AIM-9D and AIM-9G in fact. The Seeker range is also greater than the R60M's and combined with its smaller field of view, the A9L is very resistant to flares. However, I have to stress that this resistance only applies to rear aspect shots. In side or front aspect, it's much easier to decoy the A9L. Maneuverability is arguably the most dangerous characteristic of this missile. It has the same 30G limit as the L60M, but due to its longer burning motor, the A9L can stay maneuverable for a longer period of time. In rear aspect shots of 1.5 km or closer, 12G barrel rolls are necessary to dodge this missile, and it can still be a serious threat out to at least 2.5 km. When we consider that aircraft maneuverability decreases quickly with altitude, it's then easy to see why the AIM-9L would be even more lethal at high altitude. So, as things stand, the AIM-9L would probably be the superior missile to the R-60M, in almost every respect, and only outclassed by its Russian counterpart in low-speed, close-range maneuverability. And even then, not by much. As I mentioned though, the R-60's maneuverability isn't as good as it could be due to its uh, less than optimal guidance values, uh, so just keep that in mind. Another point I want to bring up is flare sensitivity. This is a complicated topic since we not only have missiles likely underperforming against flares, but the flares themselves are generic across all aircraft. I've already made a lengthy bug report on missile flare sensitivity, so if you want the details you can go read that. There's also an ongoing discussion on the forums about uh, realistic flares that's an interesting read as well in my opinion. But for the purposes of this video, I'll simply say that the infrared emissions of a flare are, depending on the specific wavelength you're looking at, either similar or much more intense than those of a non-afterburning jet engine. In other words, many of War Thunder's missiles should be, at minimum, as sensitive to flares as they are to jet engines. This is, of course, if we want to aim for greater historical accuracy. Such a change would make early heat seekers almost universally weak to flares, but as a consequence, it would also make flare equipped aircraft much more powerful than those without. Honestly, a discussion about flare sensitivity and its various effects on balance and gameplay is worth an entire video by itself, so I'll leave it at that. To see some of the more immediate effects, we can make a few modifications to our custom missiles. In this case, we'll have matching flare and jet engine sensitivity for the R60M and AIM-9L. To even things out slightly, I'll add in gate width values uh, to mimic some of the characteristics of conical scan seekers. If you have no idea what gate width means, uh, don't worry. 
in simple terms it causes the missile to ignore anything near the edge of its field of view. If you want a better explanation, then I have an entire video dedicated to breaking down how War Thunder's missiles work. Oh, and I'll also make some improvements to the R60M's guidance values, just so we're looking at a best case scenario. Okay, so here we have the modified AIM-9L, and as you can see, it's now very vulnerable to flares in any aspect, uh, provided you turn off your afterburner. The maneuverability and range is unchanged, so we can quickly move on to the R60M. And sure enough, the R60 is now much more consistent in pulling those 30Gs. However, it's still terrible against flares. Drop 204 and it'll go for them just about every time. The only significant difference here is that the AIM-9L doesn't have a strong advantage in flare resistance anymore. However, it still has longer seeker and aerodynamic range. If you come away thinking that the AIM-9L is a better missile, well, you'd be right, but I'll go into further details regarding gameplay toward the end of the video. From here on, we'll take a look at other all-aspect missiles that might arrive sometime in the future. Let's start with the humble AIM-9P-4. We already have the base AIM-9P in-game, but the P-4 sub-variant has an all-aspect seeker similar to the AIM-9L. The results are fairly predictable. It's essentially an AIM-9J with proper all-aspect capability. In some respects, this is a better companion to the R60M than the AIM-9L, since the AIM-9P-4 would have worse maneuverability, greater seeker range, and similar aerodynamic range to the R60M. So overall, pretty evenly matched. Moving on, the next missile is the French Magic 2. This missile has numerous improvements over the original Magic, namely an all-aspect seeker, increased G-limit, and resistance to countermeasures. Most of the information I've collected came from this report by Forecast International, so if there's more detailed or more reliable sources out there, then I'm unfortunately not aware of them. The more easily acceptable bits of information from this report are the Digital Signal Processing and Multi-Element Seeker, which almost certainly translates to countermeasure resistance. Plus, it states outright that the maneuvering limit is raised to 50G. The report also mentions that the Magic 2's lock range is greater than its actual aerodynamic range, uh, but it neglects to mention under what conditions this occurs. Uh, is it in front aspect or rear, and is the target using afterburner or not? Without more details, it's hard to know for sure, but for now we'll guess and say the Magic 2 has just under doubled the lock range of an AIM-9L along with a tighter gate width and lower relative sensitivity to flares to you know, account for the countermeasure resistance. So with all of this in mind, the Magic 2 is likely to be better than the AIM-9L in every way except aerodynamic range. As you can guess, the 50G limit makes the Magic 2 simply impossible to dodge below 2km and gives it extremely high agility. While it's still possible to decoy the missile with flares, this only works in side or front aspect shots, alongside good throttle management and multiple flares. In rear aspect shots, uh, you can degrade the Magic 2's tracking with flares, but it's not enough to defeat it. You'll have to combine high G, high speed maneuvers with a dozen or more flares in order to survive. Not only that, but the flares will need to be deployed between you and the missile. The Magic 2's extremely high acceleration will also leave targets with little time to react in close range shots. Up next is the AIM-9M. This missile is an improvement on the AIM-9L, but only in terms of its countermeasure resistance. It will still have the same aerodynamic range and maneuverability, and probably the same seeker range as well. Much like the Magic 2, its countermeasure resistance means that defeating the missile in rear aspect is very difficult but not so much in front or side aspect. Its key advantage over the Magic 2 is its aerodynamic range. At low altitude, the Magic will quickly run out of speed past 1.5km and, and generally be unable to catch its target past 2km. By comparison, the AIM-9M can reach out to at least 2.5km. This difference may seem small, but it grows significantly with altitude. For example, up at 6,000 meters. The range of the Magic 2 is 3.8 kilometers, whereas the AIM-9L's range extends to about 5 kilometers. 
bear in mind that all of these ranges are for targets traveling at about Mach 0.9, so you can expect lower ranges against faster targets. The last missile we'll look at is the successor to the R60M, the R73A. Reliable information is a bit hard to come by, but this is what I've been able to put together. The R73A is capable of around 40 to 50 G and has extremely good low speed maneuverability thanks to its use of thrust vectoring. This maneuverability goes hand in hand with its high maximum lock angle of 60 degrees. Being a larger and more modern missile than the AIM-9L, we can expect its seeker range to be slightly higher. The same applies to its aerodynamic range, roughly equal or higher than the AIM-9L. However, it has only mediocre countermeasure resistance. The R-73 is much easier to decoy than the AIM-9M or Magic 2, but it can occasionally get past the flares if the target has a slow reaction time. And that is where we'll stop, I think. More advanced missiles like the AIM-9X, R-74M, IRST, and so on are pretty difficult to find good information on. In general though, they can all be characterized as having extremely high maneuverability, with maneuvering limits exceeding 50G. They'll also have high off boresight lock-on, even greater aerodynamic and seeker range, plus some highly sophisticated countermeasure rejection. I think it would still be possible to avoid these missiles, but defending aircraft would be pushed to the limits of their defensive capabilities, requiring careful timing and distancing, high speed, high G maneuvers, and continuous use of flares. There are also more advanced flares and directed infrared countermeasures that could show up alongside these missiles, but regardless, I doubt we'll see any of these in the near future. So to finish up, I'll go over some conclusions about what we can expect from all aspect missiles. Obviously, the ability to use missiles in a head-on can be useful, but it's generally not a good idea unless you know the enemy doesn't have countermeasures. That isn't to say that head-on missile shots are impossible, but you're just gambling on whether or not the guy in front of you is a dumbass. Shooting from the front gives your target a clear view of the incoming missile, and any missile is going to be weakest to flares in a front aspect shot. So, instead of pushing head-ons with these missiles, it's better to attack from unexpected angles or to take advantage of distracted opponents, in which case flares are unlikely to be even a factor. Talking now about specific missiles, if the R60M and AIM-9L were added to the game tomorrow, I think the AIM-9 would be the deadliest of the two, especially in a rear aspect shot due to its higher maneuverability and countermeasure resistance. If flare sensitivity is increased across the board though, this will make it easier to deal with the AIM-9L and other missiles in general. However, it will dramatically shift the balance of power towards flare equipped aircraft, so although such a change would be more accurate to real life, it might also bring some negative consequences to game balance. Where possible, it might also be wiser to give an aircraft AIM-9P4s instead of AIM-9Ls as these are still avoidable without flares, provided you have enough speed to evade. In an ideal situation, aircraft without flares wouldn't even be able to face all aspect missiles, but I doubt that's going to happen given how much compression there still is at top tier. When we look at the Magic 2, AIM-9M, and R-73, the Magic is arguably going to be the most difficult to avoid at shorter ranges, since it combines 50G maneuverability with extreme acceleration and good flare resistance. Like its predecessor, the high performance of this missile will likely be balanced out by French aircraft having fewer missiles overall. The Mirage F1 and Mirage 2000 could only carry a maximum of 4 missiles, while other contemporary fighters carried as many as 6 to 10. As a closing statement, I want to say that we've only looked at short range infrared missiles, so we can't form a more complete picture of future gameplay without also looking at more advanced radar guided missiles and potentially active radar missiles like the AIM-120 and R-77. But hopefully this video will at least temper some expectations about how all aspect missiles will perform. They are certainly more capable than what we currently have, but they also have some very obvious weaknesses that can be exploited if you know what you're doing. Okay, see you later, I'll be back in another year, or two or more, I, I don't know.